Hey there, everybody. I'm Carson Grubaugh. Welcome to Living the Line. Today, I'm really excited. We have a guest filling in for Sean. Our friend Edo Brenes is back. Uh, Edo, thanks for joining us, man. Hello. How are you? And thanks for having me. It's great to be yeah. here again. So you're you're bringing a book to the table that I also really love. But can you tell us tell us what book you chose to talk about today? Okay. So I chose uh, Kingdom by John McNaught and published by No Brow. Um, so uh, I found this book, I don't, I don't remember exactly how, but I was living in the UK and this book just had just come out and I saw it in a bookstore and I was just drawn to the cover and then I opened it and I fell in love with, with the art and, and so I just bought it. Uh, and then after I read it, I figured out this is like a work of art. Like this is a masterpiece, uh, storytelling wise and the art also. Uh, so I became a fan. And so I, I bought all his other books. And then I, I went, uh, he was giving a talk at the East London Comic Arts Festival. So I also went there and I uh, talked to him for a bit and asked him about his process and stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to be here, uh, you know, reviewing this book. Well, I'm excited to you know about his process because that's something that I've been mystified by when I when I look at it. Uh, we'll get into that for sure. Was that I remember when we when me and Sean talked to you, um, you said that there was an experience where you walked into like a comic shop and found no brow press and fanographics and like had this eye opening experience. Was this one of the books that you found in that initial like exposure to no brow? Yeah, no, it's not one of the books because that initial experience was in, I think, 2015. I think this book is from 2018 or 19. Okay. So, so it's not from, from that time, but it was a similar experience. You know, but you were, you were aware of No Brow by that point then? Oh, yeah, yeah. I was a huge fan by then. Okay. This was my exposure to No Brow. Okay. Um, I had I had seen John McNaught's stuff on Instagram just like in the last year or so it was the first time I, I found him and so oh, I got to get some of that and like so much of this stuff is out of print and this was like one of the few that was in print and then I got it and it's it it it's such a beautiful like object like the canvas there's a canvas texture on the cover mm -hmm. and the the paper that they use in it is just like this a really amazing paper that's almost I don't know it's almost got like like visible fibers in it or something that sparkles and I was just like oh my god this company makes such amazing books and I ran out and bought a bunch of their other stuff and it's like oh the, man all their stuff is this well done um yes, but I this was this was the one that that really turned me on to them as a company too um so really excited to be talking about it and yeah he's a uh, mind-boggling uh master of comics and craft as well so can you can you you had a um a, a poster print that we could compare to the first page and then you could talk a bit about his process as he told to you yeah i have this um screen print um so i bought it there at the east london comics art festival and this is kind of the the first page of the book which we'll see later uh, and i think we can yeah, here, you hold that up. I'll hold up the... <laughs> yeah, okay. So, yes, so this is a three-color screen print. And then the other is uh, a, sc a scan of the each layer that he uses to work and then modify digitally to give, like, more colors, I think, and even the gradient. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so yes, uh, I was talking to him, and we will see in the book, but... He works with three transparent layers and he uh, paints on them with black ink. So when you put one layer on top of the other, the ink that's behind starts to get grayer. And then if you put a third layer, it's even grayer. So he can see like the tone, the tonal range he gets from three colors. Mm -hmm. And what he does is he works the whole book like this. So each page, he has it a complete page and he saves them and then he scans them and he assigns a color digitally. I think he works with Pantones. So he chooses which Pantone he wants to use. But because it's digital, he can choose one panel of the page and say, instead of blue, this 
layer is going to be red and this one may be green. So you get like more colors inside the book than what you would get from a screen print of just three layers. Mm -hmm. uh, but the process is the same. Uh, so yeah, I've seen the artwork and it's, it's very detailed and he works with a, a, a small brush, I think. Uh, and then he also uses like, I don't know, some kind of palette knife or scrape knife just to remove some details that he didn't want there. So you can see the scratches inside the book as well, which is really, really nice. And I think the paper choice with the old textury is, is to go with the fact that it's all actually hand-drawn uh, at first. So it, it gives that impression actually. Um, I remember on his Instagram account, he was making a lithograph of the cover and mm -hmm. he, he has the whole vi video where he makes it. And I, I initially thought the whole book was lithographed and then scanned. And I was like, wow, this guy is crazy. <laughs> uh, but no, the, the, the initial part, it is hand-drawn, but then it's all done digitally to you know, be more precise. But, but that's still a crazy way of working because if he's relying on that, the vellum paper diminishing the value, is he starting with the lightest colors and then moving, I would assume that he would start with like the black drawing first. So like on a, any cartoon face that you'd start with that and then do this next. I, would, I think so. I don't, I don't really know um, which one he, he, he does first. Uh, but yeah, I would guess so. He would start with the, with the black one. I, said, I would think that's easier, you know. Um, I know he has an underlying drawing where he traces from. So he already has the line there um, done in pencil. But yeah, I, I mean, even, even knowing the process, I look at this and I sometimes I wonder how he came up with, how, how he did that specific drawing or frame. And I'm like, okay, this is, this is crazy. I, I couldn't do this even if I, you know, had, if I did it digitally to try and recreate it. It's very weird. I mean, he, he's, he's a master of this process. Um, yeah. But, yeah. And, and I've on, on the, the, the next book that I want to do, I'm trying to come up with something similar where it's all shapes and flat colors. And mm -hmm. so I've been looking at his work a lot. And the only way I can think to do it is to do it digitally. But then it loses that hand done quality that he has to his work. Um, and there's definitely I know some panels that I've marked that I just look at and I'm like, how, how do you plan that <laughs> mentally? Um, so we'll take a look at that when we look at the book. Um, should we go ahead and just start looking at the book? Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. So that, 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 uh, screen print you have, like you said, is this first page of the book. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of like the colors on that better almost now that I've seen them in comparison, like without the gradient here. Uh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. But I got the impression that the whole book is, uh, the whole book is just two, two spot colors in black, or is there are there more colors? No, I think there are more colors because um, you have the the blue one, the red one, and they make the purple, I think. But I think they he also uses like changes the the value so that you have like two or three of the blues and the reds. Uh, but okay. there's also there's someplace in the book there's like a yellow and a green as well so but those I, I think are more you know done digitally to change like from the original layer yeah it was I was wondering if it's all achieved through combinations of those two colors or if he has given himself other colors it's really hard to tell because it's so well printed yeah it feels like spot colors um but I mean one of the things and you can tell me what it is that drew you to his art. But to me, it's like the fact that he he does so many panels per page sometimes, but each one is like a perfect little composition that could be a screen print all on its own. And that that in and of itself is just frustrating right out the gate. Yeah, yes, I think, well, he was trained as a screen printer. Uh, no, as a printmaker. So he knows all the techniques and then he worked as a technical officer in, I don't know, I think one, one university where he was there, I think for eight years, you know, helping students 
So okay. I think this, this mastery of the technique, you know, of using layer upon layer upon layer is, has been, um, I don't know how to say this, um, really well mastered until, you know, he gets this kind of books. And yeah. Yeah, you can see it. You can totally see it. Yeah. And there's a, uh... The other thing I like about his all of his works, not just this book, Kingdom, and we can get into like what the plot is on this one, which is his plots are always secondary, it seems like, like they're important, but he's he's creating like space and an atmosphere. And there's a sense of like stillness combined with movement. Like when they when they go into the shopping mall here. It feels almost like it's all happening at once, but then you can also go and read it as like the kid looking around and looking at different scenes. And so I kind of am always having to interpret his sense of time. And I think that's one of the things that really fascinates me about his work. Yeah, yeah. But what I, what I like about his work as well is that it, it's very British in the fact that, you know, these experiences of going to the seaside and stopping at, the, at this kind of, highway malls and stuff when i was there with my wife we, we bought a car so we started to get into the culture of going doing these things and it the feeling you get when you read this book is exactly the same feeling as when you do it mm -hmm. so so there's a very good uh symbiosis between the storytelling and the images where you if, if you've lived through this it's very real and, and that's what, what makes it, I don't know, even better than just having like great art. It's like the narrative is so, you know, even boring at times for the main character who is actually bored. He's a teenager. He doesn't want to go to this trip. Um, he's stuck there with his, with his mother, his sister, and he's just like, I just want to use my phone. And, and you can <laughs> feel it. I don't know. It's, it's very nostalgic as well. Yeah. And I've never, you know, I, I haven't had that. Uh, British experience but I've been on the family vacation you know and even though like the the particulars of it in another country don't translate over there's still plenty of places like this or plenty of experiences like this in my American experience where this translates as well you know even if it's not like a beach trip that I've had with the family it's just that family trip at the crappy you know, a place with the crappy, like little umbrella and yeah, yeah, you're bored. I mean, I didn't have a phone, but um, it all still translates across time and across country. And I think that sense of boredom is like so many panels too. And like looking at so many different things, that's, that's, I guess, part of what I like about it and the way he's like slowing down time where mm -hmm. it seems like everything's happening all at once, but also, oh my God, it's taking forever. Yeah. it's it's really effective the way he uses panels yeah Here's another. There's, there's even sometimes 35 panels per page yeah that's that's the most i've, I've counted i think there's no more than that but it's a lot <laughs> and and it's something as simple as like blow drying his hand like right here can kind of take forever and just that slow move through everything. But the kid remains like really curious too. Like it's the, the fact that he's checking everything out so closely, like the condom thing and the schedule of like how people have cleaned the bathroom. Like he's that bored. Yeah. On that page you're on, on the, I think the, the right side, the third row, the last panel, that's, that's one of my favorite panels. And it's something he, he works a lot is, looking through glass and reflections mm -hmm. and that one you can see that the kind of glass is like a stained glass or something it's not completely transparent and just to to observe that and then to put it on the page and then you have i think two more panels after that which have like the same effect it's it's just i don't know i, I really appreciate those kind of details <laughs> Yeah, that was one of the looking through glass. That's the one that I may put a sticky note on here yeah, because this is one of the ones that blew my mind in terms of like, how do you even plan this? Especially knowing his process, right? Yeah. That you're looking at the reflections on the glass, but also seeing the objects through it. And I've seen plenty of images like that from photorealist painters, but they have every color in the book available to them. And Mm -hmm. You know, but when you say, okay, I'm limiting myself to 
like two colors and black and i can still pull off that effect and a really simple simplified abstracted style it's just mind-boggling like yeah. the planning yeah it's really amazing amazing yeah i had that page also marked because you have to you have to appreciate it just as a, an illustration on its own yeah yeah and any of these panels really as an illustration on their own but those two for me are just like that shows his total mastery and he must spend a ton of time laying these things out and kind of pre pre visualizing and sketching mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. color sketches or something i don't know but it, it just seems like so tight um so yeah you want to go into the story a little bit you want to talk about that expand upon it yeah so so it's it's about the this boy, I think he's a preteen or early teen, uh, that goes on a trip to the beach with his mother and his sister. And it's a very long drive. Uh, the mother is taking them to one of the places she used to go when she was a kid. And it's one of her favorite places. Uh, but then you see like the whole trip, uh, when you get there, there's no one to interact and he finds a friend, but he's not exactly the same personality, but they have to be friends because they are the only two kids of the same age. <laughs> and it's, it's all that you no know, nuisance and he just wants to get back and then he has to go out because there's no internet uh, at, the, at their house or their cabin. And then he has to go to the fields to get uh, just a one, how do you say that the, the, the marks on the, uh, bar yeah it's like we can go get if you go up on the top of the hill you get three bars instead of one bar yeah something like that and yeah i think that's that's the whole book and just what they do with their time there without you know giving any spoilers yeah and and i i like that because it's not the typical and you've talked about that too like like messing with the the speed of the narrative in your work that it doesn't have the normal like peaks and balances. This one almost like has it, it's almost like a level. Like there's no real peak. I mean, there's there's a couple peaks in there, but they're not huge. Like any kind of emotional peak in the book is like small for, for me, at least. And that evenness throughout was a new. Well, not totally new, but it's a different experience for me. Yeah. No, I. I... And I think when you read the book, it's, it's also very soothing, very calm. And I don't know, it, there's something to it. And it's, it's the same with all of his books. Mm -hmm. I think this is his best work out of the three, the other three and this one. But yeah, you can see the, that the progress he starts getting. Um, he deals a lot with memory as well, mm -hmm. which I think is part of the book, even though this is happening to the boy in real time. It feels like he's writing like a diary of all the boring stuff he's doing. Yeah, the, these are some scenes I really like too. Um, when he's when he's playing video games because he plays video games a number of times throughout. Uh, like when he's in the arcade, he's playing video games, and I like that his illustration style. Like you don't really see any stylistic change between the video game and the real world. Um, so it's like the carrot, the, the boys like as sucked into that or more sucked into that than he is in the real world. That's a trick I noticed a number of times throughout the book, putting those on an even playing field. Um, and his renderings of the ocean too. Yeah. Are so yeah. stylized, mm -hmm. but great. Is, is this the kind of stuff here where you're talking about that? He scrapes into it with the razor blade, these little like triangular marks. I don't, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think so. But you can see some of them. Yes. Uh, but also because he's using sometimes like a brush, it can get like a bit dry. So mm -hmm. it goes through the triangular motion, maybe one or two are just left behind. And it just gives that feeling. And also the, the fact that it's, it doesn't match perfectly one layer with the other because it's done by hand, but it's almost perfect, but not yeah that's also really really nice to see and that's what pushes it from like when i was looking at this trying to figure out okay i want to do not this style but something with this shape 
and shape based and flat color based approach. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to have that like hand done feel that he gets, but I just couldn't conceptualize and still can't conceptualize working that way. So then I moved digital, but it's like trying to figure out how to bring some of that back in the mm -hmm. digital. And I just don't know I'm going to get it. Another one that he gets that's very um, like it seems like it comes from printmaking is when he does get a gradient in there and it's like with stippling or something. He has a texture like in the clouds here. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that looks lithographic to me where he's got like a, a spray pattern almost. Maybe he's spraying with ink. Yeah, it could be. Could be. It looks like pencil or crayon or something. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a very soft gradient. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's done with, you know, you can see it's, it's not with grays, it's with black. And, and just like speckles yeah. yeah 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 so i mean all of it's missed it. here's another drawing yeah. that when you realize how few colors he's using how he's limited himself the the amount of variety that he gets in there is amazing and that it remains totally readable too yes mm -hmm. I don't know if um, he's working on another book or not. I, I hope so. But he's doing like comics for the London Review of Books or something. And he posts them like every week. And they're actually really, really good as well. But I hope he has a book coming out sooner rather than later. Because I want to read something else this long. Uh, yeah. Well, maybe they'll collect those short ones. That would be good too. It could be. Um, so here's the... This is what the mother remembers, right? The mermaid's cave. Like, that's what she went to go to. And when he's talking about memory, um, she gets there and she says immediately, like, oh, it's not quite how I remember it. Like, she remembers it being this amazing, magical thing. And they get there and it's kind of like this old bank cave. But then also immediately, like, her daughter goes in there. And the mom can see it being magical again because, like, the daughter's in there, like, wow, I found a bottle cap. Wow, I found a, you know, and I thought that was a really, those are the kind of small, like, human observations that he makes that allow him to have this very even tone. Like, it doesn't have the typical peaks and valleys of a narrative, you know, but those small observations are what carry, carry the narrative, I think. Yes, I, I really like that sequence. And, and also I, I, I identify with it because, you know, when you're saying, oh, this is the best thing I've seen and then you get there and it's not exactly how you thought it was. And now that you're older, you know, and, and the memory is just a different memory from when you were a kid. Yeah. And it seems so real as well. Yeah, I had a place like that um, that I, I went to probably two years ago. And it was a place that me and my brother went to all the time as kids uh, where we would climb on the rocks. And I remember the rocks being these huge things. And it was like this total adventure to climb in and around on these rocks. And I went there and as an adult and the rocks are like, you know, a half a foot taller than my head <laughs> and you could get on them real easy. And it was like no adventure. Um, so yeah, I relate to that pretty strong. Also, this thing, I've, I've been on beaches that have not a bunker. This is like a, a war bunker, but I've been on a, a beach that had like a concrete slab like this that you could get into and stand on that had graffiti all over it. Um, that that felt very I don't know when you when you're in the UK going, did you did you go into any beaches that had these old military bunkers? No, I, I never came across those, but. But yeah, there were other things like some ruins, like houses or abandoned factories, which were very similar. But no, I never saw a bunker. Covered in graffiti and all of that. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that was probably the thing that felt most familiar to me. And then I like that it said dread because I was thinking, okay, is that a shout out? Because this, this feels uh, very different from like a 2000 AD, but I think he is acknowledging like Judge Dread and other UK comics. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Um, do you, and then you said you wanted to avoid spoilers. This book's been out for a while, so I'm, I'm cool with going all the way. Okay. Okay. Uh, Cause one of the things that, that comes up that 
to me ramps the book up a little bit and takes it out of like the calm sweetness is this carcass that they interact with. And I was curious about like your reaction to that. Yeah, I I love that part. <laughs> you know, it's it like it breaks like the monotony of the rest of the of the book. Mm -hmm. It's actually something quite interesting that the boy likes. You know, this this it's not normal. He thinks it's gro gross and it smells bad, but it just draws them to this point. Uh, and it it's like it makes a memory worth it with this other kid. Because for me, he won't remember this trip, but he will remember this. Mm -hmm. And and that's yeah. like a very strong point because you know, you never remember everything, but this is something that's going to be on this kid's mind forever. And yeah, so I really liked it. And, and it feels like that against the experience his sister's having, where his sister's kind of having that same experience that the mom had of getting to go see this magical cave. And like, I don't know, this, this fantasy thing that the sister's going to have, like what he's going to remember about this trip is it's almost like the loss of innocence thing where you're seeing death, experiencing death, probably because they talk about like, you know, have you ever seen a dead body before? It's like, well, you know, I saw my grandpa in the hospital before he died. Yes. Um, so yeah, the boring trip, the fantastical trip for his sister turns into, yeah, something that uh, like a loss of innocence story, something that will haunt him probably for years to come. Uh, his first encounter with real death and real decay yeah yes and it's also it's it's quite cool because this i mean later on we'll see that the, the two boys are talking about what it's like to drink beer and you can tell that neither of them has ever drank beer <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like trying to be cool and because they're in, i don't know 13 years old and they're just you know very close to trying their first beer and i think one of the boys I don't know if he has actually drank beer, but the other one is just trying to follow up and say, yeah, yeah, I drank beer. And they talk about brands and, and it's this, this thing you say about the loss of innocence. And now I have to prove that I'm, I'm an adult. And yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. And that other boy that he runs, <clears throat> excuse me, that he runs into is kind of like the, um, I don't want to call him a bad kid, but he's a little bit more like the troublemaker, right? He's like, come on, look at this dead body. Like, have you ever drank beer? Mm -hmm. And those are the characters like he'll never he'll never hang out with that kid again either. But he'll remember that character in his life for quite a while. Yeah. And that seems to be part of the vacation experience. It makes me think of a couple other books um, that the Jillian Tamaki that this one summer yeah. and um, Dash Shaw's Bottomless Belly Button. There's a couple like beach vacation yeah. narratives. Uh, there's a Bastian Vivez a sister where he the kid goes to the beach and there's like the older girl who's kind of more sexually aware um, yeah. it fits into all of those kind of i don't know i don't even want to call it a genre but it's a category of story yeah. this is a great effect here too where he's playing with those dot patterns on the breathing on, or she's she's breathing on the window and makes the smiley face mm -hmm. yeah he when i went to his talk he, he made emphasis on, on how he began to notice like reflections where he was in his flat uh, against the winter light outside. So he started to do just sketches on this with this type of process uh, of windows and reflections and puddles. And then you could see the progression because he showed each and every one of them until you get this. And it, it really is a mastery in the study of all of these things. And then you can see it here, like he uses it in the window and then it disappears, but it's raining and you can see the rain outside and it really feels like a heavy rain. Yeah. When, when he was showing those process things, did they start out more representational and, and get simpler and more abstract as they went? Yeah, I think, I think so. Um, I think he started with just pencil sketches and okay. then he, once he, turn them into, you know, lithograph or screen print. And he would also do gradients using these methods. But yes, I remember the process, though I, I don't remember specifically everything, but I remember it was like a long process till he got here. Yeah, it seems like this would have to be 
because once he's reached this style that he's got, he's able to render, like you said, pretty much anything within the really strict confines of it. Yep. But it's like so simplified and so abstract that to pull off all of those effects. That's why I think about each one of these as like an illustration that he spent a week on. Like each panel almost seems like it has that much thought about how do I pull this off with such simple means? Mm -hmm. um, and it's enviable, especially for me, because I'm so bad at simplifying. <laughs> <laughs> I understand you. <laughs> well, you're, you're, you're able to compress pretty well. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes I wish I could compress more. I think we all, I think as we get older, we all see the beauty in that. I don't know. As, as a young kid, it was always like, how realistic could I be? Like, I would want to paint this like totally realistic with every color and every gradient. But now I look at it and it's like, oh man, if you do that with three colors, so you're way more of a badass than the person who does it with every color. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, here's another one where he's got that glass. So he, he was explicitly talking about glass as something that fascinated him. Yes, and glass and water and puddles. Did he say what it was about it? No, I think, I think it, it's from what I remember though, I don't know if this is exact, like he was, he's working on his computer or his art and he's just looking out the window and he sees the same image every day. So he starts to notice other things until he starts to see the fluorescent light reflected on the, mm. on the window. And he's like, okay, this is more interesting. And then after that, he started to pay more attention to, to puddles and all these kind of weird things that light makes. Mm. Yeah. And then like took on the challenge of, okay, now how do I represent that <laughs> with a couple shapes? And because <laughs> yes. he's a psychopath uh, and amazing. I think that, and I think that, that's my favorite spread because not only because of the heavy rain, but specifically where the rain hits the cars and, and you feel that the, the water hitting them really hard and splashing. And also because I wouldn't know how to start to make this. <laughs> no, especially because it's all like triangles, right? It just, yeah. it's all triangles, but it somehow makes a picture, except for on the cars, it, it turns into some more solid shapes, but it's pretty much all triangles. And it, I don't think it will come across on camera, but this is some of where you can see like the brush stroke mm -hmm. actually becoming part of the image and that tactile sense of the reality of it. Yeah. And here's some more on these puddles. Here's some more of that like really subtle like spray gradient that he does yes. all throughout this scene. Yeah, it's just amazing. Yeah, and there's one other really big illustration that sticks with me. I think it's the final one of the book. Uh, yes, the, the beach. Yeah, the beach at the end. Yeah, well, they go and draw this. They draw this like uh, 19, 1990s superhero guy with spiky shoulder pads and ripped abs on the beach. Yeah, and it's washed away. I think that's what I like. I think it's on one of the last pages. Yeah. That big image there. Mm -hmm. And that's that's where like that and then him like reflecting on the photographs or taking the photographs of that dead body is like i think to me the that's like the key to the end of the book to my interpretation of the book is mm -hmm. that childishness being washed away a little bit yeah, and then exactly. the lasting memory of this this dead dead thing that he's watched nature stripped down to the bone and like kind of the beautiful brutality of that. And then after that, it's just like back in the car, you know, and back to real life and banality. Yeah, which I think that that night scene is quite, uh, you know, it goes well with the child childhood being washed away with the waves on the other image. And it's like, we started on this, a, a very similar image, but very, you know, it's daylight and now it's nighttime. 
So it's like going from, you know, daytime, which is childhood to, you know, adulthood, which is night. And it's very different one from the other. Uh, and I think all this, these 10 final pages just make the book like come to a close like really well. Yeah. And, and in a way that's like almost not expected because of how monotonous the rest of the book is. Like you almost think, man, this is a book that maybe won't even have a conclusion. It kind of just goes until he gets bored of it or whatever, you know, or you just go home. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of people could probably read it and experience it that way and not pick up on the, the more intense stuff going on underneath the surface. I think you could be like wowed by the art. I think you could be wowed by the production enough. I th and I think the first time I read it, I got more of the monotony out of it. And then on a second and third read, I was able to dig deeper um, in, a, in a really rewarding way. And uh, that's that's the risk of making something that's so visually beautiful and then slow at the same time. And I appreciate that he took that risk. Yeah, and also that, you know, that Nobel took the risk in publishing it as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is... I don't know. Like I said, this was my first exposure to them. So in my mind, like this, this set the standard for what Nobrow was in my mind. Yeah. Like he seems like one of the early artists that they worked with that kind of pushed their production standards. I, I could be wrong, but. No, it could be. I think the, his first book, I think it's very early as well. It's 2010. Um, his first two books are 2010, and I, I don't really know when Nobel started, but I think it's around that time. Yeah, I have the feeling that he kind of like, or like he was their big breakthrough artist, at least. Yes. I don't know. I just, again, I could be biased because it was like the first, first thing I picked up um, by them was his work but to me he kind of sets the aesthetic and like the they really have a and this this should be a huge compliment to you like they don't they don't mess around with people who aren't producing amazing looking books mm -hmm. you know like all of their artists yourself included mm -hmm. are extremely visually capable artists who are going to produce beautiful looking works um yeah, and that's that's why I go to them. And then the production quality that they get out of their books is just phenomenal. And, and this is a prime example. Like the tactile, it's got like this canvas cover. Yeah. Nice it, binding on the side. I think the production is really good because I have the other three books as well, but I could only find one of the Nobro books. So I have to I had to buy one of them in French and the other one in Spanish. Mm. And and like uh, Birchfield, Birchfield Close, I think is the name of this one in English. Um, yes, I have that one from No Brown. Okay, but you can see like from this publisher in Spain that the quality of the print is not the same because I think No okay. Brown takes very good care of the paper they use and the stock and the colors and everything. And though this one is quite nice, I, I won't say it isn't, but the paper, I'm sure that the one from No Brown is also very textured and very you know, this one is very, I don't know, smooth. Yeah. What's what's the other one you have by him? I have a, I know this one, this is Birchfield Close, I'm sorry. I think this one is called Dockwood in English. Dockwood, yeah. I have those two. There's a, there's a couple other ones. One. Yeah, I don't have that one. This one is that one's like impossible to get in English. It's like a couple hundred bucks. Online. Yeah, I think... You should get it in French because I know there are a lot of copies because to be honest, it's wordless. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to go do that right now <laughs> before this episode comes out. Yeah, because I think, yeah, if, if I look at it, there's no dialogue anywhere. Maybe there's just like the title of the stories and, okay. and some, because even though he has some like, infographics of you know places that you can visit so you have the name in french but underneath you have it in english so it's the same thing <laughs> well i'm definitely going to get that i i just did that with uh 
a manga artist that that uh, Sean's doing the Kickstarter for, but some of his stuff is printed in in French. And really all it means is that the sound effects have been translated because that's all there is. And it's like, oh, wait, okay, I can go ahead and grab that book. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you, Ado. I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna go grab that right now. Because we'll yeah. that's the one that I'm missing. Yeah. And I'm definitely, he's someone that I want to be a completist about. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so I, I was really excited. This was, this was a book I've been wanting to talk about for a while. So when you said like, hey, let's talk about kingdom. I was, I was yeah, yeah, excited. Um, and then before we jumped on, you were telling me some, some news of your own. Do you want to share with people what projects you got coming out, what they can look for? Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, so I, I've just finished, uh, I've, I've sent the final PDF to Nobro of my upcoming book, which is called Tourists in La Habana. And I think that one's going to be published next year, so spring 2023. And I'm just starting with a French editor working on the next one, which is called uh, Apart Hotel Deluxe. But that's just in the script writing stage. So yeah, been keeping myself busy, and, you know, just working hard. <laughs> Yeah. And you work fast, man, like because because uh, Memories from Limon just came out this year. Right. And you've got another. How, how long is the tourist in Havana? It's. Four hundred and eighty pages, five hundred pages. Yeah. No, no. Sorry. Three hundred and eighty pages. Three hundred. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, it's been a hundred pages longer than Memories from Limon. OK. But I did it faster because I, I, I don't know, I just got my system very well. You know, I know how long I'm going to last on a page. And then I try to do like just sketching 20 pages and then inking them and then coloring them. So it's faster that way instead of just doing one and then the other one. Yeah. So Because I've noticed that when I start inking after sketching, my mindset is completely somewhere else. So it takes me a few hours to get into inking and the same with color. So if I do 20 pages at a time, then my mindset is just like, okay, inking, inking, inking. And, and, and when I've done one page at a time from start to finish, it takes longer because <laughs> I have to change mindset and change mindset every, like sketch, then ink, then color, sketch in color. And then it, it just, my brain doesn't work that way. Yeah, I've, I've gotten that way more and more over the years too, where I batch it. And like, I've gotten to the point where I think that I would pretty much, like lay out a whole book before I inked it. Like if I, if I was doing something in ink again, uh, I don't think I would ink it until like all, like it was a 500 page book. I would wait till all 500 pages were like pencil oh, basically. No, I can't do that. I can't. No, I, I have to work 20 to 50 pages at a time, but I cannot do one whole thing because I also get bored. I yeah really bored of sketching and then really bored of inking and i hate it so that i have to change constantly okay that's all i wanted to ask like if you were switching just to keep your mind like mm -hmm. into the process or if you like like also uh, uh, the one thing that always like tempts me to jump ahead is like i get excited about it and i want to see it finished yeah and i'm like i want to see what this looks like and so i could see like okay 20 pages is the most i can wait on okay yes now, normally, I mean, I, I have to do that. So I have to do the first five pages. I have to finish them to see how it's going to look. And then I can continue and do jumps of 20 to 50 pages. But I have to do those first five just to be sure it's going to look how I want it to look. Yeah, yeah, I get that. That's, that's the most exciting part is the first five when you're like, that's what it's going to look like. And then the rest is just like, okay, now I got to do it. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, the rest is it's more more working than having fun, but it's also, I mean, it's, it's not the worst job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's a pretty good gig. Um, yeah, so thanks thanks for joining us again, Ido. Uh, really appreciate it. We'll, we'll have to have you back when, when Sean's mm -hmm. back and we can talk about another book. Um, and everyone, yeah, definitely keep an eye out for uh, tourists from Havana, which you said next year sometime from Nobrow. Yeah, I think, they, I don't have a date yet, but I think May next year. 
Okay, awesome. I'm really looking forward to that. I know uh, we really enjoyed Memories from Limon. And and uh, Edo, Edo sent over a, a PDF of his first book, Lobster Paradise, yes. which we read and also really, really enjoyed and, and seeing the bigger world that you're building. Um, I think that's going to be really fulfilling for people over time to follow all these projects and get a bigger picture of what's going on. I hope that book, Lobster Paradise, gets published in English at some point. It was just released last. I'll buy it last week on in French, so I think maybe we'll get English someday soon. And thanks, thank you for buying it. <laughs> and, yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll definitely. But any publishers out there listening, you got you got a sale here. Um. So thanks so much, Edo. We really appreciate it. Yeah. No. Thank you, and hope to be back soon. Make sure to like, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell.